My name's Dean Halfpenny. I work at the London Orthopaedic Clinic and my specialty is looking after pain. I look after the pain side of things and obviously part of the multidisciplinary team would obviously include pain management at some point, which is why it's really important to have all of us along. You'll meet the rest of the team later. So, the title of tonight's topic is Why Do I Hurt? And I thought it might be useful just to talk about pain, pain pathways, and some of the areas that these patients may typically experience discomfort. This is my composite slide. It's not going to change much. And I'm just going to show you a little bit about what's going on. Ligaments. We've all talked about the different type of soft tissue that these patients have. Yes, they do have more flexible, more bendy ligaments. So their joint excursion is greater than most. There's nothing wrong with that. If the joints are more mobile, the ligaments are less likely to tear. And the type 3 collagen, which seems to predominate, well, has a greater ratio in hypermobile patients, allows this movement to happen. But it's perhaps not the ligaments that are the problem. Perhaps the problem really arises in the muscles and the tendons. Now, normally, the ligaments are brilliantly tensile and they limit joint movement. The problem with hypermobiles is this movement carries on and on and on. And your second line defense, your tendons and your muscles, they kick in. They say, hang on a minute, this is a bit far. What's going on here? So you will get a reflex spasm. You will get the muscles kicking in to actually control the additional movement going through joints. Now, this can affect any joint, peripherally, typically feet, often knees, but certainly hips and shoulders, and very often the spine itself. The ligamentous, the ligamentous integrity is loose. So what happens is the muscles tend to form the stabilizing network to keep patients going. The muscle being an excitable tissue is very much dependent on intact membrane, having an intact membrane so that we can have correct polarization and depolarization. When you lose membrane stability, what tends to happen is the muscle becomes hyperexcitable easily polarized, and the other problem with the muscle is very often it simply doesn't listen to its external command. The muscle starts behaving as an independent unit. So what do we have? We've got <coughs> muscles behaving independently, spasming, increasing in tone, increasing in tension. Do the muscles get to rest? Not really, because they're working twice as hard. This is why patients get fatigued. They're practically fatigued all the time, just keeping themselves upright. And it's very difficult for them to understand and recondition when they are feeling that fatigue. So we've got tired muscles, we've got muscles that potentially are in spasm. And then you also have the problem with relative hypoxia within the muscles. In other words, the muscles are not getting the oxygen that they should have, and they start to create further damage. It's little wonder that people become painful and exhausted. The muscle strain across the entheses and the tendons results in repeated tendinopathies, inflammation of those sites, and these are often very, very tricky to manage. In terms of pain management, we, as John said, have to look at all our patients as individuals. <coughs> their genetics change, their needs are incredibly unique and appropriate to them. If we can identify the areas of problem, we can at least formulate a plan. We don't always get the plans right because they can be incredibly difficult to manage. But we use drugs, combinations of drugs, and painkillers are very important. I'm going to end, we've talked about the joints, but let me talk a little bit about central sensitization. Whenever there is a global pain state or pain state from an area that has persisted above and beyond normal tissue healing, we tend to find that the brain, instead of shutting down to pain, remains open. In other words, the brain in itself becomes hypervigilant. It starts looking out for pain. It gets confused signals from the periphery, and everything starts to feel like pain. Movement feels like pain. Normal mechanoreceptor and touch begins to feel like pain. And it's the, diff the difficulty we have is differentiating out these for our patients, and that, that happens in their rehab and obviously in their later treatment. Central sensitization requires specific drugs which can actually control it, and we have different things like gabapentinoids, we often use tricyclic antidepressants, and sometimes we use specialist infusions to control the central sensitization for a period that we can get patients up and moving again. 
Pain is dreadful for muscles and muscle inhibition. We know that when there is overwhelming pain, the muscles simply don't pattern properly. And when they're not patterning properly, it's very difficult for them to move on. And through John and myself, the patients we see, we try and get the pain control to the best we can so that they are able to engage in where they will get better, which is in fact through physical therapy. Thank you very much.